Hi designers, it's Haley with Silver Moon Design School and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a 3D nail polish mock-up. It's perfect for showcasing your label and packaging designs and will be sure to look stunning in your portfolio and impress your clients. If you're short on time and don't want to sit through a tutorial, I totally got you. I offer this download on my creative market and I'll leave the link below. And if you're working on a project and you're stuck and just not sure where to go next, I do offer one-on-one -on -one virtual coaching sessions where we'll take 30 minutes to go through your project and get you unstuck. But if you're here and you're ready to learn, then let's get started with the tutorial. All right, so I'm here in a new file in Illustrator and I have a new artboard with two layers. I have a reference layer where I've placed my bottle example as well as a brush since I couldn't find one together. Um, I did want to include this as an option in case you wanted to showcase the color on the nail polish brush itself. Um, and then I have another layer called design and that's where I've placed my graphics that I will then put on top of the container here. So first things first, I'm going to turn on my rulers, Command R, and I'm also choosing my rectangle tool right here to trace along the outline the furthest edge of the bottle so we can find our center point that we will revolve our shapes around. And then next, I'm just going to start tracing the shape, and this is a really good reference. We don't always get an angle like this where the base of the bottle is flat, so we are very lucky we don't have to use our imagination too much today. Wrapping the design around, I will have to touch this up a little bit, and sometimes it helps also to flip to an outline view. This way I can get this more precise. And then it's hard to tell, but I do know that this goes up into a lip here, and I will want to include that as well as some little ridges for the top. And then I can just go back selecting all of these with my A arrow, the direct selection arrow, and just round those so that they are softer and not so angular. And then once I have that outline, I'm gonna select this and I'm going to go to Object, Path, Offset Path. I'm going to choose 0.01 because we do have a very thin outside line here, but then we have thicker areas. So I'm going to just choose 0.01 and using my scissors tool, coming back to our path here and snipping there and there because we only need that inside line. We don't need that outside one. And then I'm going to start moving the paths from that inside line to match this thicker base here we have so it doesn't tip over, right? And sometimes we just won't need certain anchor points, so I will delete them so that we've got a nice curve. And then using my smooth brush and then adjusting my anchor points so that they look nice. They don't have to look perfect because perfect isn't real, right? We want it to look convincing and accurate, but maybe a little imperfect sometimes. So I'll use that to our advantage here. And then using our smooth tool, we can move that up to like 20%. I can also select our other path and use the smooth brush to smooth that a little bit as well. Let's see what that did to the top. No bueno for the top, that's fine. And then going back to our pen tool, selecting that inside path, we don't need the curve to follow this, right? We need it to be straight because the inside of the bottle is straight. So I'm just deleting all these anchor points from that copy that we made, moving them to join the inside here. And then with both of those paths selected, I'm going to hit Command J to join them, and then just make some last minute finishing touches, curving the inside of that lip, and then coming down to our base here, making some touch ups. But then once I flip, you'll see that we have followed the shape of the nail polish bottle very well. Next, we're gonna to move to the lid, which same thing, using the pen tool, just tracing this lid. And this is actually at a little bit of an angle. So what I'm gonna do is just imagine a little bit of how a nail polish bottle would be, curving the top there and then curving these just ever so slightly, but we want to leave a little bit on the inside, right? Because the brush needs something to attach to once it is inside. So that's how we're going to leave this lid. 
And then I'm gonna come back over to our brush here. Same thing, I might just eyeball our little guy. And then using the pen tool, I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm just tracing around this plastic part because this is all gonna be the same material. Okay, gorgeous. Reveling all of my edges just slightly. I wanna keep that one actually pretty 90 degrees. But then this will need to be a curve. And this part won't matter as much because it'll be inside of the lid. So let me add a solid fill to that and complete the shape by connecting these inside anchor points. All right, so once you have your shape of the brush up here, come to revolve and round that out. Next, what we're gonna do is just trace the outline of our brush here. I'm just using the pencil tool because I want it to be a little rough around the edges and a little bit rugged. So I'm just drawing what is here and I know I'm gonna have to touch it up, so don't judge me. <laughs> um, and also we should have taken, in, taken it up a little bit into the base here. So that's what I'm gonna do. Just redraw that, take those two shapes, combine it together and we'll turn it gray so we can see. Um, then I'm just gonna click on inflate and adjust the volume until it is full. And then I'm gonna choose inflate both sides because where we're gonna get the texture is from a material in dimension. So I'm just gonna make sure that it is deep enough. There we go, volume. So I have the depth at zero and then I have the volume at like 48%. And I think that's gonna give us what we need to at least have some representation of that shape in the final product. And then if you wanted to add like a little nail polish drip, then I would do the same process where I would kind of get like a goo shape going. And then you could do like a drip like this, same thing, fill it. I mean, it could even be the blue. And then come back up and use inflate adjusting the volume, adjusting the depth until it looks like it's a convincing droplet. It kind of looks like a tooth. I think I'm gonna draw something else. We'll just do a one dropper. So we'll do like a one big drop, maybe like another little blob. Is that better? That looks less like a tooth. <laughs> All right, and I'm gonna inflate both sides again, bring down the depth bring down the volume a little bit. Um, and then I also will use our smooth tool here to make it a little more blobby. And um, I don't like what happened over here, so I'm just gonna fix that really quick. Gorgeous. All right, there's our paint. Um, now we need to add our revolve to the other elements here. Oh, we also need the inside. We also need the paint color, duh. All right, so we need the paint color. So I'm gonna go to object, path, offset path what we did before, 0.01. And I'm gonna to flip to the outline again so we can see where the inside edge is versus the outside edge because we are going to get rid of that outside edge again. And then use our pen tool to connect back to the center line. Let's go ahead and remove those so that we can line those up. Hit Command J to join and then flip that back around and there is our nail polish color. So now we select that, we hit revolve, and we select this, we hit revolve. And now we have all of our pieces and parts. So I'm gonna highlight all of them, collect for export as multiple assets, and I'm gonna name those. And then with all of those highlighted and named, I'm gonna choose OBJ from our format dropdown and then click on export. And then I also need to export my graphics. So I'm gonna highlight everything in the design and click save as a single asset. And I have that saved as a PNG so there's no white background. All right, next I'm in a new project in Dimension and I'm gonna click on the Environment tab and change my background to white. And then I'm just gonna start dragging in my objects. I'm gonna start with the container here. So I'm gonna get this lined up the way that I like. Keep my lines centered instead of at an X. I just like how everything adjusts easier that way. Next, I'll bring in the polish. I'm not gonna worry about aligning it too much. Next, I'm gonna bring in the lid. I'm gonna kind of hover that upwards because then we have our brush stick and then we have our brush right there. 
and I want to get those aligned. So on the left, I have it selected and I'm going to center, center. So now that they're centered, I can start moving the pieces up. So the brush can move deeper into the plastic piece and then the stick can move deeper into the lid. And then I can group these all together, even though I will apply some different materials in a minute. But now that that's centered, I want to get that centered with everything else. So I'm clicking again, center and center. And then I'm going to move everything back to the right placement. And then now is when I can add my little drip. Get that rotated 90 degrees so that when I also rotate my drip 90 degrees, it'll look like it was lined up how we had it. And again, highlighting the drip and then doing a center and a center alignment. Now we can move it up so it's overlapping the bristles a little bit more. So now we've got the polish that also needs to come up, but we can't see it too well, right? So I'm going to move to materials and I'm going to drag class over the container so that I can see polish and get that lined up on the inside. And then for polish, we can choose a paint because that'll give us something that's opaque. And then it's up to you what kind of color you want to choose. I think I like a matte, but maybe I'll go with glossy just so it looks a little more realistic. Maybe like fresh blue paint. Let's try that over the drip and over the polish. And we could group the drip and the polish together so that whatever adjustments we make to one, we can make to the other. So we'll just name this paint color. And then I'll drag that over both so that they're now linked as materials so that whatever I do to one happens to the other. It's looking very cutie, very convincing. Um, for the lid, I want that to be like a matte, even this black paint rolled might look nice for the lid, more like our example, give it a little bit of a texture. Nice, and then I'll choose a plastic, kind of like an opaque plastic for the, kind of like a matte plastic, but something with a little opacity for the wand part, the stick part, because we do want to see the bristles through it. So now I'm going to go back and try to find one that matches pretty well for the um, bristles. So let's just scroll through. So it may not be conventional, but even something like rough asphalt is enough to give us a little bit of a texture and dimension without it being too off. Like it gives us some like sparkle, it gives us some lines, but it's not going to be exact just because, you know, it's dimension. <laughs> but it at least gives us enough where it's convincing from a distance. Like unless you really looked up close, you wouldn't know that we faked it until we made it. But I think that this is giving us what we're looking for. So I'm also going to move the lid and the drip back down a little bit closer. And I think it would be cool to have like a little bit of a lower angle. I'm going to just add some three point light now to the whole thing and turn down the intensities on it for sure. because It's going to be very, very bright. And then now I can place on my lacquer and I might change the paint color because the graphics are going to be harder to see. Let me turn off ray tracing. I'm actually going to change my graphics now that I'm looking at it. I'm going to choose the blue from my brand board for the color here. So opening up the materials panel should be able to paste in my blue color. And then I'm going to change my graphics to the tan instead of the blue and re-export that so that it's more legible on the bottle. And then coming back to the container, I'm going to click on the graphic, click on the image of it, click on this file folder and drag the new one in so that it is more legible when we look at it. And then, yeah, I'm just going to adjust the background lights a little bit, but when everything's all set and you're happy with how it looks, then you can come over to the render panel. You can choose your uh, quality settings. I usually stick with high, but just to do a test preview, you can choose medium. And then we didn't create our camera bookmarks, but if you did, you would add one like this, clicking that camera with the plus sign. And then once you come over to the render tab, it'll show up right here. So you can click that so you don't have to go and move your angle each time you want a different angle. You can pre-save all of those. And then I usually choose a PSD with a 16-bit channel so I can take out the background and have a PNG rendering that I could add on top of a pattern or a background. Um, and then just click on render. 
And here's the final look. All right, designers, that wraps up this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. If you like my videos and want to see more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and comment below with what you'd like to see next. Until next time.